Well, here I am on the porch again. This is about my third attempt to comment on this issue because it's a dodgy one. But I was, I was flipping through the US Guardian the other day and there was some article headlined. I didn't even bother read it. The headline was nauseating enough <clears throat> about having to deal and handle, get, get, having to deal with whiteness. Whiteness is the central problem in society today, the cause of all, all ills. And I thought to myself, does that person or does the guardian, well, uh, let's say the author of that, I can't remember who it was. Does, does that person actually think that that headline and that, 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 that um, approach uh, uh, has any effect on the US ruling class or the power structure, the man, the whatever we call the 1%, the oligarchs, whatever we call them. Do you think for one minute they're afraid of a headline like that? Not at all. They welcome it. They welcome it. Because that's not what the problem is. What is the problem in Asia? I have a friend from, well, I don't have her anymore. I don't know her anymore. We didn't have a, anyway, that's beside the point. She was from Guam. And she said how her parents saw the, uh, uh, the Americans as the liberators, these white people, and also many Filipinos because of Japanese imperialism. So what is it there, the yellow, 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 because it's difficult, they're all yellow or whatever, the hell racial color is attributed to them. So this nonsense that whiteness is the problem, it doesn't mean that the question of color is not an issue that we have to deal with. But if the white, if that, if that was any, uh, um, if, if it had any uh, uh, potential to to change the conditions that are oppressing people, to eliminate racism, to eliminate sexism, to eliminate poverty, to eliminate exploitation, this issue of whiteness, it wouldn't be in the Guardian. They wouldn't publish it. Class is the problem. Capitalism is the problem. Those who own the means of production, who owns them, who own the uh, the means of communication, who own uh, uh, all of the functionings of society, these are the problem. They're mostly white. They're probably mostly Protestant too, but those are secondary features. It's not the main problem. The problem is who they are as a class, who what their class position is in society. It's just nauseating to, to listen to this stuff. Whiteness is the problem. And also it comes at a point in time when the idea of white privilege, white skin privilege is real. If you read um, Theodore Allen's books and Jeffrey, Jeffrey Perry, who pushed me to read them, rest in peace, Jeffrey Perry. If you read those books, this idea of the white race was a construct in society, it was a it was introduced into society to society uh, to the point where Irish people were the same race as the English. What nonsense! They, they were called the white chimpanzees and the white N word by by the English bourgeois. You know, so yes, it matters that this was brought into society. But if you look at the people that came, the Eng the first English, the first English settlement, Jamestown was a uh, settled the first permanent english settlement jamestown there were all white people that came there were well, not there are others brought there but they initially were white people from england but they weren't all the same white people a charter was given that company the virginia company by the king by james the uh, feudal king the finance was through the, from from the mercantile capitalists of London, just like the guns that overlooked the Catholic ghetto in northern in Derry uh, were financed by British, uh, British uh, English uh, uh, mercantile capitalists. So this whole idea of focusing, particularly at a time now, so that played a role in the history. We all agree that the white race was created as a means to weaken and undermine. The, the unity of, of, of working class and the poor uh, in the early colonial times. And it's been horrific for black people in this country, people of African descent, and 
consequently all people of color and the native americans are on the bottom of that heap but we have to see it for what it is and the liberals all jump on it but they're, they're all white most of the people that write about this crap like the trashy book that the, the white fragility and others and and and, and then black black petty bourgeois that want to advance advance their interests within the capitalist system they jump on it you know but it it's um it's just insane especially at a time i've been here 50 years in the 50 years i've been in the united states the white working class has been savaged it's been savaged and and to to not recognize that and see now that the link this idea and this link between the white ruling class who say to the white worker and have told the white worker you're 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 with us we're on this we're, we're together we stick with me with the same race is weaker than ever before it's weaker in the 50 years that i've been here than ever before and still these the the, the petty bourgeois liberals want to jump on this whiteness is a problem and that comes from white liberals who feel guilty who about the privilege they've had about the they went the best schools they've had all the connections and everything else that comes from them so they attack the white worker they don't have to worry because they've got everything but when you when you see a head like that and when that's uh, like that and when it's made the main issue and people like ibram x kendi and others who who are the black petty bourgeois who are trying to advance their interests in capitalist society in competition with the white ones and also in unity with them in the way they see the world they jump on it too they jump on it too but it is a disaster it's a disaster i'm going to end with this because i don't want to go on too much i remember when we were trying to organize or the restaurant workers were trying to organize a union at one of the fast food places i'm talking 40 45 years ago and i can't remember where it was but it was owned by a black sort of a sports figure now if i remember rightly the guy that had came to the union or that was leading it was a young black worker what happened the black boss fired him fired him Where, where's the unity there he didn't say oh yeah black brothers uh, black brother you should have a union because it'll be better for if black people are in unions their their conditions their wages their everything else are better off he didn't say that and that happened a second is another example when the, the Alameda County one time was trying to pick a janitorial corporation company, they picked a minority one, it was a white woman, but they picked a minority one on the basis that it was union and most of the employers would be black. And it, it, I don't have to quote the figures, but black, black people in unions do a lot better than black people outside and the same with whites. They're better off if we're in a union all, all the way round. And so this black contractor comes up and says, I could have got them cheaper. I could have got them cheaper. No, no unity there on the basis of color. So this nonsense, this nonsense when you see a headline, it's a disaster. It's reactionary. It hurts the fight against racism because the white worker, you're forcing our, our job, our role for activists and socialists is to break that link between the white ruling class, white racist ruling class, and the white working class, and it's weaker than ever. In the, I'm, I'm talking from my experience. The 50 years I've been here, it's weaker than ever. And the white petty bourgeois want to push it. It's a disaster. Well, that's me for today. <laughs> I'll talk to you later.